Hola y bienvenidos. I'm Nancy Montoya with the University of Arizona Marketing and Communications Department, and this is Behind the A. And we're back. Uh, today we're doing something special. We're going behind the A with the Tucson Festival of Books. And my colleague, Andy Ober, will be right back with an interview with Dr. John Schaefer. Thank you, Nancy. We are here with Dr. John Schaefer, former president of the University of Arizona, also author, photographer, conservationist. I want to get into the process of putting together a book like this in a minute. But first, give me the 101 on Desert Jewels. What are people going to see when they open this book? They're going to see plants that are normally pretty blah and bland to look at uh, in full flower. It's a miraculous event that occurs spring, summer, depending upon the uh, cactus in particular, and it changes to an incredibly beautiful little jewel. We are in an area where there is so much to photograph. When you set to put together a collection for a book or for personal use or anything like that. How do you decide on a subject, and in this case, why cactus flowers? Cactus plants by themselves are often pretty unattractive. They're surrounded by weeds and rocks, and you tend to avoid them because they uh, can have un 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 uh, consequences that are not particularly favorable if you run into their spines. Uh, but once a year, they burst into bloom. Most of them flower for a very short period of time, a day or two. Uh, and uh, it's a transformational miracle. Uh, it attracts all kinds of pollinators and uh, propagates the plants for the future. Uh, capturing that on film is something that I've found uh, intriguing for a long period of time and decided that this is something that I can do uh, in a retired kind of situation. Uh, they're around year after year, and I can take advantage of the opportunities that I have to look at these things, interpret them, and share them with the public. So talk about the process. Where did you go to get these pictures? Uh, over what period of time? How, how did this collection actually come about? The collection spans about 20 years. I started uh, seriously photographing these things about the year 2000, when I moved out to the far east end of town. And uh, started out in my backyard and around the yard and discovered that uh, there are cactus farms in Tucson that specialize in these species. And uh, I got to know people at B&B Cactus and other places, the Desert Museum, the Desert Botanical Garden up in Phoenix, and decided this was a project worth pursuing. And so I started out with the intention of photographing all of the cacti in the world. Uh, and that's just the northern and southern hemisphere, actually, because they're American plants, New World plants. Uh, that obviously was a, a bit too ambitious. There are about 3,000 species of cacti. And I wasn't going to have the opportunity to visit all of these places. But in Tucson, uh, there's a great source of potential plants to photograph. Uh, people use them to decorate their yards, uh, spice up their lives in many ways. And if you're really curious and want to pursue this in a regular, real kind of way, you can go visit places like the Botanical Gardens, the uh, uh, cactus shops, and the desert around us and begin photographing them. So if I pick up this book and I'm not an expert in photography or I'm not an expert in desert plant life, what should I be looking for? What can I get out of this book that maybe I wouldn't be thinking about? Well, first of all, it's a relatively easy uh, kind of photography to pursue because first of all, these plants don't move. So you don't have to worry <laughs> about shutter speed and that kind of stuff. Uh, they occur in a region of the world where there's a lot of light, so light is pretty easy to handle as well. Uh, so all you need is a camera and the ability to sit down and uh, arrange your uh, 
photography and position of where you're going to photograph uh, carefully, quietly, no rush, uh, just the intention to get it right. So you are a known conservationist. I would have to imagine books like this are a key tool to showing the beauty around us, a key tool to showing why efforts like that are important. So how, how does doing this, this, this hobby, this you know, post-retirement profession, whatever you want to call it, how does it play into your passion for conservation, you know, kind of using photographs to tell the story? Well, a lot of these plants uh, qualify to be endangered species. Um, they've been collected for uh, centuries, actually. Uh, Columbus took back some cactus plants to Europe on his first journey to the New World. Uh, as a consequence of the fact that uh, these are beautiful little jewels, people have collected them and sometimes collected them near to or to death. And uh, that's something that we need to be aware of. Um, by uh, The way I organize the book is uh, by families. It turns out that cacti, like birds, uh, different families of, of plants. Uh, so I've tried to introduce all of the families that one can find in the Southwest and in Mexico and then have several species, if possible, of these uh, plants to show. Um, and that's essentially the way the book is organized. Families and then uh, selections of flowers and plants from those families. This isn't your first foray into publishing books, putting together collections. What else can we find? Uh, what, what have your previous books covered? Well, uh, my first books were on photography itself, how to do photography, and this goes back quite a while when uh, I started uh, darkroom work and uh, how to expose film correctly and how to develop it. Uh, but that's almost a bygone age right now with the oncoming of digital photography. But some of those lessons still apply so my first books were in photographic techniques, essentially. I did a book uh, with the Desert Museum a number of years ago on uh, the Desert Illuminated, and it uh, also is, uh, it photographs, it, it, it presents photographs that uh, are characteristic of the region that the Desert Museum has an interest in, main, namely our area and uh, Sonora and uh, the environments around there. So that was my first uh, foray into uh, flower photography. So a as we've said, the area around us is beautiful, and it doesn't look like many, there aren't many areas around the world that look like where we are. Uh, we've seen, uh, as you know, in the new Linda McCartney exhibit at the Center for Creative Photography, how this area inspired her, you know, where she first picked up a camera. Uh, obviously, it inspires you. So can the actual physical landscape where we live, can that be a part of making Tucson and, and making this area kind of a photography hub? Yes, I mean, one, if you're interested in photography or any uh, particular subject, uh, you really want to bore down into it and uh, not just skim the surface. So. Living in Tucson, as I've done for over 60 years, uh, one gets to know the environment. And uh, most people be tend to become familiar with where they are, uh, and familiarity uh, sort of makes it, you wonder, well, what's so special about this place? Because you accept everything that someone coming in for the first time, I say, wow, look at that. No, it's just day-to-day -day stuff. Well. Taking photographs uh, of day-to-day -day stuff makes you look at it really seriously and makes you think about what makes it special and how do you capture that specialness of uh, flowers, plants, that the environment in which you live. And so that's one thing that always motivates me in taking photographs. Uh, in the year 2000, when I started out uh, photographing these plants, I decided, well, you know, I live here, 
I'm not traveling as much as I used to. Uh, let me think of something that uh, I can photograph, uh, create a subject that's interesting and uh, expand upon it, interpret it, and maybe have it appeal to other people. I started out as a black and white photographer, and I, I still consider myself as, as a black and white photographer in many ways. And I started photographing these plants in black and white, and they were interesting enough. But all of a sudden, spring came along and they started to bloom. And uh, I said, oh gosh, <laughs> I've got to get into color photography in a real serious kind of way. So I made the transition from black and white to color, and uh, that was a new joy for me as well. So the University of Arizona is obviously home for you, and the Tucson Festival of Books, you know, it's a great home for the Tucson Festival of Books. What does this event mean to you uh, personally, and, and, and now that you're getting to participate you know, uh, a, as an author, what, what does this event mean for you and, and for this community? Uh, it's a chance to shout out that Tucson's a really special place, and there are lots of things that uh, people ought to spend time getting acquainted with. Bird life here is interesting. Arizona is, has the longest list of birds, for example, species, of any landlocked state in America. Uh, we have a fabulous collection of uh, cacti that propagate themselves from the mountaintops to the valleys in Arizona to the harsh deserts. And these are worth getting to know because the more time you spend out of doors looking at what makes Arizona unique, the more special it's going to become to you and the more enriching the experience of living here will be. I know you're doing a panel with some fellow photographers at the Festival of Books. What, what's that event going to be about? Uh, you know, I don't know. Oh, okay, fair <laughs> enough. We, we will edit that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that uh, I'm, I'm going to be asked to speak about uh, cactus flowers, but I don't know what the others are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you, you said you've lived here for 60 years. You obviously know uh, about everything you could know about what surrounds you, but as you do a book like this, has anything surprised you? Have you learned anything new? Uh, what what has been you know what has been a discovery for you in doing a book like this? Well, how fragile our environment really is, and how we have to raise personal and political consciousness about the environment. What is the importance of water? We're talking about water more and more, and the reality of life is that. If the water shortage continues the way it has been in the last few decades, the environment is going to change, the landscape is going to change, plant life is going to change, and not always for the better. Uh, so whatever we can do to raise consciousness about that uh, is, I think, a worthwhile pursuit. And hopefully my Cactus Flower book will prod a few people into thinking about what are we doing to this place that we love and perhaps love to death. You said you, you, know, you, you have ambitious thoughts about things you would like to photograph. If you could wave the magic wand and put yourself somewhere to take the ultimate photograph, you know, your, your ultimate bucket list photograph, where would that be? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, one place I haven't been is Antarctic, uh, and uh, I'd sure like to go down there sometime and take a camera along and see what life down there is all about. But I'll continue photographing uh, plants. I'm photographing birds now very aggressively. It's been something I've been able to do in my backyard. I now have freedom to travel and would like to expand my horizons on bird photography. Well, Desert Jewels is the book, Dr. John Schaefer. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Nancy, will be right back.